on the hot seat in the Rose City tonight. This date, yeah, it's been circled on the calendar for a while now. Crosstown rivals Portland State, the University of Portland meeting at the Child Center. This is the perfect way to start a weekend. Good evening, everybody. Ann Schutz joined by my broadcast partner, good friend. That's Jennifer Mountain, former great at Gonzaga, also making the rounds in the WCC in coaching as well. All right, J-Mo, thoughts on tonight's matchup. This is a game both teams say they want badly. Let's go. Well, in-state rivalry, rivalry, I mean, it's huge for both squads for multiple reasons. Portland State, it's their first time out. A lot of newcomers. Time for coach to really see what these guys are made of. Portland's off to a great start, 2-0, but the depth is going to be another key factor tonight. Coach Legs really wants to see what these guys can do. You mentioned a lot of new faces for the Vikings. Cameron Parker is one of them out of Montana via the transfer. This guy can score a little bit. Oh, boy, can he dish it up. Oh, man, tremendous passer. Led the big sky in assists when he was at Montana. He's a defensive stopper, runs the show for the Vikings. He's going to have a great opportunity tonight to show what he can do as far as keeping the ball in front, and he's got to do a good job from the perimeter as well. If you're Portland State, keys to the game to come away with what people would consider an upset. You got to limit turnovers, number one, by making great decisions. Got to put a ton of pressure on the basketball. Make sure they, you know, get it out of the hands of shooters. Play at their pace and their style. They want to be themselves. And then the last one is going to be rebound. It's going to be a huge factor tonight. All right. The Pilots, they return a bunch of guys. A lot of faces that are familiar. But the one who stirs the drink, who makes them go, a guy they call T-Rob. Yeah, preseason all WCC pick. He is a leader. He's a competitor. He can back you down score in the paint, shoot the three from deep range, and pretty much can guard one through five. He is the glue of this team. He understands what's expected of him, and he just is a solid performer day in and day out. Got to be a big beast tonight. A <laughs> big beast. I love it. If the Pilots are going to win, what do they got to do? They want to push the pace. They've been talking about wanting to go a little bit quicker, taking care of the basketball, getting rid of those unforced errors, know who they're guarding. That's going to come down to a scout, and then minimize Portland State's opportunity in the transition, and then rebound is going to be a huge factor. Pilot head coach Shante Leggins makes no bones about this one. He says his guys want this one in the worst way. Time to get it on. Portland State, the Portland Pilots, ready to battle for city bragging rights. Lineups, opening tip coming up next. That's a nice overhead view of the 
Child Center. We're on the campus of the University of Portland. River City rivalry, baby. We're ready to go. Good crowd on hand, and it's going to be loud. And the starting lineups look like this. All right, Jennifer Mountain starting with Portland. The usual suspects look out for Moses Wood. Yeah, had a great night. First game out. He was hurt the first game against Lewis and Clark, but 12 points, five rebounds, five assists. They need a big one from him. When you look at the Portland Pilots and how balanced they are, nearly all of their starters in double figures, that says a lot. Oh, that's huge. And, you know, there's a couple other people off that bench that are right behind them. The depth is going to be a huge key for their success throughout the season. All right, let's talk about Portland State. We already mentioned Cameron Parker, the transfer from Montana. He's a Portland native. It's a guard-heavy lineup for Jace Coburn. Satterfield jumps out to you. Yeah, UTEP transfer, very solid on both ends of the floor. They really need him to do a great job of scoring the basketball and then rebounding this evening. Portland State had great success last year when they went small. It looks like they're going to try that in their season opener tonight. Yeah, talking with Coach Coburn, I mean, they could have multiple lineups tonight. Just getting a feel for what these guys are made of and then going live. All right, so 2-0, and the Portland Pilots. Again, to remind you, Portland State, this is their season opener. It's going to be really interesting to see how quickly the Pilots can maybe take advantage of all the new faces with this Viking club. We'll soon find out. And before we tip it off, let's introduce the newest member of our broadcast team, Brenna Green. Great to Portland have you with State us. Our two teams built off of the transfer portal, but they are in very different stages of that building. Portland State lost eight players this offseason. Of the four who remain from last year's team, the only one who saw significant starting minutes was point guard Michael Starks. The other three only started a combined five games. Meanwhile, for Portland, four of their five starters started 14 or more games last season. We'll see if fresh blood or relative stability in this college basketball landscape went out tonight. Back to you guys. Brenna, Brenna, Brenna. That's great stuff. We're so glad to have you with us, and we'll hear from you throughout the game. Thank you so much for that hit. And we're moments away from tip-off. Portland Pilots in their home purple with the black numbers and piping. Portland State Vikings wearing their road whites, if you will, with the green trim. J-Mo, I think the first five minutes, six, seven minutes are going to be really critical for both clubs, maybe even most importantly for Portland State. Yeah, just to kind of get the cobs right out. You know, the, the lights are are going and it's for real. Um, and again, <laughs> just, you know, it's the excitement of the season starting for these guys. Vikes win the opening tip. Good crowd here at the Child Center. Jennifer Mountain, Brenna Green, and Shots, delighted to have you with us. And we are underway. And you can see right away how Portland State is trying to spread the floor and take these guys off the off the dribble. Ooh, basket didn't want it. Harvey looked like he had that thing down. It rims out, and here come the Pilots. Inside look. That's a nice high-low look. Vucinic's just got to finish that, but a good look from T-Rob. Iman came over and maybe hassled Vucinic just a little bit, and the foul's going to go against Iman, his first, team's first. Well, you see right away how fast Portland State wanna, wants to get the ball up the floor. He talked about transition. That's one of their huge keys, and they're going to pick up full right now to put the pressure on Portland. Still scoreless. Got a mismatch down inside. T-Rob, the drive and kick. Plenty of time on the shot clock. Good baseline defense. What a look and pass. Easy pickings that time. You love the dish. Great little patience right there by Wood and just Sholan sneaking in from behind. Easy two. Defense was right on cue as Portland State steps out of bounds. Portland State's defense just for one second fell asleep. Easy layup for Portland. Absolutely. And I think defensively, both sides really are going to be crucial. The other night, I thought Portland State's defense was phenomenal. A lot of energy, intensity, and very physical. Again, you see the mismatch down low with Vucinic. Big mismatch. And teams trading turnovers at this point, and you can see Portland State wants to get in the pilot's grill. 
Yeah, they're going to put a lot of pressure. You know, talking with Coach the other night, I mean, he said, pick your poison. They have so many weapons. Right now, you can see they're really trying to take away the perimeter and try to make them go inside. Parker hesitates. Lefty, you bet. Smooth. Parker, the transfer out of Montana. We talked about him, a Portland, Oregon native, so you know he's got friends and family in the stands. We're at two apiece. Yeah, Jesuit High School kid. Beautiful move inside, still at the rim, can't get it done. Ball belongs to Portland State. You love the looks by the Pilots, but so far they've only come away with the deuce. That's a great spin move down low for the big guy, but he's got to be able to finish that gather, be strong. I think he thought he got bumped a little bit, but no call. Bucinich is going to have to anticipate getting bumped a lot in this game. All the way to the rim, high flyer, nothing there. Flying in for the board is Wood, and here comes Portland. Portland State's got a lot of speed on the floor right now. So Starks picks up that foul, his first team's second. Good recognition by Moses Wood. He had that lane and drew the foul. Just a little too much body. Right here, used his chest a little too much, leaned into him, hands are up, but. Love the fake by T-Rob. That's a look that Wood wants every time. Yeah, they'd like to have that one back. Not too many open looks like that from the three-point line. Long ball is true by Satterfield. I'll tell you, Portland State is coming in here with no fear, playing very relaxed. A lot of tempo, a lot of pressure, very physical. They like this pace, do the Vikings. Absolutely. Look inside, roll not there, and Bucinich couldn't react to the pass from Sholin. You know, he's had a mismatch inside, and I think they're so focused on that because they weren't probably, you know, looking to go to that right off the bat, but uh, they've got to get back into more of a rhythm and get more people involved offensively. Pilots open the season with that victory against Lewis and Clark. Another home game against AM. They win that handily just the other night. So 2-0, Portland State, season opener. I think that pass surprised Iman a little bit. Yeah, good penetration by Starks, though, getting to the paint. You know, as a guard, if you can break the defense down and get, get yourself into the paint, good things will happen. Former pilot Hayden Curtis checking in for the Portland State Vikings. A little 1 2 2 full court trying to make things happen here by the Vikings. T Rob has been quiet, facilitating at this point. At some point, you'd expect him to start getting some shots up. Meadows hasn't shot either. It's been inside to Vucinich the whole time, and that two minute drought has cost the Pilots the lead. Wood hesitates all the way to the rim. And there's, a, there's exactly what Moses, they've got to respect the three. He takes him off the dribble and a nice little finish. Bikes by one. Good defense interior by the Pilots. Plenty of time on that shot clock for Parker. The lefty jabs, puts it up, hits another one. That's a nice look right there. Nice little jab step, like you said, and you love the lefty. There's something about having a lefty on the floor. Parker led the big sky for two straight years and assists for Montana, but he can score a little bit too. Mike Meadows! Great take by Meadows with a good finish with the left. He can just hang in the air. It's going to be critical for the Pilots to get guys like Meadows and T-Rob involved in the offense. Yeah, I think defensively the pressure there and the speed in which Portland State has entered the game has thrown them. They just have not gotten, gotten into a nice little rhythm offensively. It's a lot of one-on-one. -on -one. Should mention that Wyatt Lowell has checked into the Portland Pilot lineup as well as both teams will go to their benches. The Pilots love the depth of the club this year. But some hot shooting by Portland State has the Vikings ahead 8-6. to six. But how about this hesitation and finish on the reverse? Yeah, Moses, let's see this again. Put it home, son.
six, Portland State leading Portland. 15-31 left to go in this first half. JMO, UP, all the points coming in the paint. Portland State, though, with a couple of triples. Yeah, right off the bat. I mean, again, I've been very impressed with the aggressive play on the Portland State Vikings side. Offensively for Portland, just not a lot of rhythm. All the points are inside, like you said. They've got to get people involved and too many turnovers right off the bat. Off the pick, Satterfield is going to leave it. Rimmon out, Hunter Woods who checks in during the timeout. Meadows harassed by Parker, inside look, another turnover, and here comes Portland State Satterfield leading it. You know, they're just, they're falling in love with that high-low option. Fourth turnover, three Rimmon out. T-Rob got hammered. Let's see if they do call the foul. Yes, they do. Well, one thing on the positive side defensively for Portland is they've done a nice job of rebounding the basketball, the defensive end. The other, the other night, uh, they made a big, huge key going into that second game of the season because they did not do a good job in their opener on the boards. Satterfield with his first team's third. Jack Perry checking in, Chica Naduka. This is an important game for Jack Perry. For what reason, J-Mo? Well, he injured his knee against them last year and uh, was a season-ending inju injury. And it's obviously really nice to have him back. Just a floor general, so smart, so smart. Last year in the River City rivalry game, the Pilots defeating Portland State 69-54. But in that first half, Jack Perry blowing out the ACL. A huge loss yeah. for the Pilots, that veteran leadership that you mentioned. Yeah, and they didn't know if they were going to get him back. And uh, I think for all the fans around here, you're going to see he's not real flashy. He's just so solid and just a great leader. Offensive board right there. Oh, look at that block inside, Naduka. Portland State, Naduka again. Two blocks in that sequence, and here comes Portland. Well, and that's what Chica does, man. He is just relentless down low, undersized, but does the job. Play whistles that dead, but let's take a look at Chica doing Chica stuff. Great timing. Wood doing a nice job of on the offensive glass, but again, just Nanduka being real strong, real physical with him. Chica. Saunders picks up the first, team's fourth. I mean, that's just kind of what that guy does. It, it is. He does all the dirty work for you. He loves it when you stare him down and say, you're a little undersi undersized guy. And he says, OK, let's go. Bring it on. Let's go. <laughs> he is Draymond Green Jr. Yeah. T-Rob getting poked in the eye there. And Saunders is going to pick up his second, team's fifth. And now it's Portland State dealing with a little bit of a drought. Boy, T-Rob got hit. Inadvertent, but got popped all the same. Yeah, totally inadvertent. I mean, uh, you know, it's again just the pressure that they're trying to put on the basketball. That was one of the keys coming into the game. So we're sitting on an 8-6 to six Portland State lead. 14 minutes left to go in this first half. Wow, what a finish inside. Moses Woods. That was a great move. Wood just kissed it off the glass. Another three-point attempt, and it's true. Man, Satterfield lighting it up. Uh, the speed in which they are getting the ball inbounds and up the floor has been tremendous for Portland State. They want to run, and they want to go fast. Doesn't matter make or miss, right? Nope. So Satterfield with a couple of triples, 11-8. Moses has just got to pull the trigger right there. Yeah. He had an opportunity. Again, Portland just a little bit out of rhythm offensively. That's their fifth turnover of the half. Mm. A lot of them unforced. Yes. So Portland State up by three. They have been healthy from that three-point line. Stuff at the rim has been checked. Nice ball movement, Portland State, Saunders kicks it. There's the fake. Good ball fake. Five on the shot clock, another three-point opportunity. And look at Saunders saying, how do you like me now? Great offensive possession by the Vikings. Side to side movement, extra pass, wide open three. Four triples now for Portland State. T-Rob rimming out, good board inside, Woods. 
Saunders had a notion. Another long ball, and Portland State is feeling it. Leggins wants a timeout. Really good timeout. Just too much room from the three-point lane. they got to make him put it on the ground. Portland State on a 9-0 run here in the last minute. And you got to tip your cap to the guys from the park blocks. All the new faces. This is the first game of the year for Portland State. You live and die sometimes by the three-point line. Well, they're living by it at this point. Yeah, you'll see a quick look here. Nice job. And here's that, that gap from the defense that I'm talking about. Just too much room. you gotta got to get an eye. you got to put a hand in, especially when they're shooting like they are so far in this first half. Okay. Let's go into the huddle of the Portland Pilots. What do you suppose Legs is telling the troops at this point? I mean, gosh, 12.39 left in the first half, long way to go, but you, you, you gotta bring some urgency. Yeah, urgency offensively, they need to get some ball movement, get more people involved. I think defensively, the intensity needs to increase. They need to really close out with a hand real high, make them do something different, and then they've gotta have good transition defense. Portland State is trying to get it out and go right from the, whether it's a rebound or a made shot. Isaiah Kirby into the Portland State lineup again. The Pilots losing so many guys. Their top scorers, their top assist guys, their top three-point guys, all the new faces via the transfer portal. And right now, this is about as good as you dial it up in terms of your season opener in, first, in terms of the first eight minutes of a half. Oh, he's got to be extremely happy with the start of this game. A lot of people involved. And honestly, the confidence in which they're playing, aggressiveness, flying T Rob goes flying and here comes Portland State Meadows back into the pilot lineup that's Ball a good tipping call off right there yep good hands by the pilots but it flicks off a couple of different pilot players so plenty of time on the shot clock for Portland State with the ball with the lead that 9-0 run has it 16 to 8 Portland State well, the thing about the Vikings that I have been impressed with is not only their speed and the ability to, you know, get to the paint, handle the ball, and shoot it, but the physicality in which they're playing. Oh, oh are you kidding me? Hunter Woods, transfer out of Elon, gets it home. Another deep ball. Yeah, a lot of physicality. Every drive, they're getting bumped. They're not handling, you know, the... the, the the feel in the paint, I mean, it's just they're, they're, the physicality is just a little bit too much for them right now. So Michael Starks picks up his second, team's sixth. Right now, Portland State white hot from the outside. 19 to eight, just under 12 minutes to go in this first half. Just a great start for the Portland State Vikings as PSU leads Portland 19 to 8 here at the Child Center. Heating up from beyond the arc. 5 of 10 from the three-point line so far in this half. They're on an 11 to 0 run over the last just under two minutes. 
And if you're Portland, you really just got to get into some offensive flow here. Foul on the floor. So it looks like Saunders is going to pick up his third, team's seventh. Like the good look inside to Christian and moving without the ball, that was a little ray of daylight if you're the Portland Pilots. Yeah, and again, you know, just going strong to the rim. And get well at the free throw line if you're the Pilots. Isaiah Johnson checking in for Portland State. And it's been a while since the Pilots have scored a bucket, but they'll take points any way they can get them. Just got to get themselves into an offensive flow, guard the three-point line a little bit better, make them do something different, and slow the pace. Foul is going to go against Naduka. His first, team's first. You know, once in a while, Jen, I'll look up and watch both coaches work in the sidelines. It is something to behold. Jace Coburn in his second year at Portland State. Shantae Leggins in his second year at the University of Portland. They will not sit down, either one of these guys. The similarity is unbelievable. Yes, very similar in personality on the court, that's for sure. Unbelievable. A lot of energy, a yeah. lot of energy. A lot love of the way, yeah, I love the way these guys roll on the sidelines. It's really something. And Jace was there at Portland State for 10 years total. Yeah. You know, bought, got his start here, got his chance, you know, second year here, head coach, and uh, he's going to do a really good job for them. It's like what Legs did at Eastern Washington, you know, as the assistant and then associate before he got yep. that main job before coming here. Yep. Again, the similarities are crazy inside mismatch. And Perry, that's a smart foul off the ball because it looked like Portland State was going to have something at the rim with Iman. Yeah, he was a little bit late on the help D, and like you said, took away that opportunity to score at the rim. Good foul. So Wood back into the Portland Pilot lineup along with Juanze Gorosito. Harvey back onto the floor for Portland State. Elevating and scoring is Satterfield. He's got eight. That's a great job of just penetrating. Getting to the paint. Nice little mid-range jumper right over T-Rob. Three-minute field goal drought continues for Portland. Yeah, just too much one-on-one -on -one offensively. They've got to get ball movement, make the defense shift. Good D inside, forcing the traveling violation against Portland State. But can the Pilots capitalize? Portland they, scored 89 against Lewis and Clark, 91 against Florida A&M. They're sitting on 10 right now. Portland State's defense has something to do with that, but just no flow right now. Yeah, I, again, you're right. The defensive pressure has been there. The physicality from Portland State has been there, but they just don't have any ball movement on the offensive end and getting people involved. Too much one-on-one. -on -one. Meadows teeing it up and hits, and boy, that triple was huge. Ends a long, long, long drought. Yeah, they needed that. He's got five points on the half so far. So the lead, 21-13, Portland State. The little scoop, the finish, taking contact is Kirby. Nice move. What great ball, or great body control. He knew he was going to get hammered. Kirby, the transfer out of Tallahassee Community College. Got the kind roll. Lead is 10. They're doing a really good job of getting to the paint. <laughs> Gorosito. All right, so Gorosito gestures at Portland State after the three. Well, there's where uh, just the experience at the college level. Yeah, you got a technical on this. Yep, watch this. All right, now watch. Great shot. Now watch when he looks over at the bench and <laughs> right in the wheelhouse of the official and the tee is coming your way, Wanze. Well, that's where he's got to be smart and keep his emotions under yep. control. And that's just going to come with experience. I mean, you love the the enthusiasm and this and that, and you love to, you know, kind of go back and forth a little bit. You just got to be smart, especially when you're trailing in the game. The Argentinian kind of blowing a little kiss to that Portland State bench and uh, got teed up 
as Satterfield continues to fatten up the stat sheet with the toss. He'll get another one. Well, back-to-back -back threes by the Pilots, huge to kind of close this gap a little bit. Ten points now, Satterfield. You knew something about him. You picked him out, huh? Yeah, he's had a nice first 11 minutes. All right, so Wanze is still chirping. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> And should mention Alden Applewhite, the transfer out of Mississippi State, is in the lineup for University of Portland. wanze has got to be smart. He's just got to be smart and let the emotions cool down just yeah. a little. I like this lineup for Portland. It's quick, very athletic, a little bit smaller, but uh, very skilled. Wild shot, but saved by Kirby. Plenty of time on the shot clock. Throws it up and scores. Busted play in a bucket for Portland State. The lead is 27-16. Wow. It's getting real chippy in the gym right now. Portland State's defense rotating very well on this possession. 10 on the shot clock. Wood. Hesitates, kicks, wide open three. You bet, Mike. Great job by Moses of finding Woods in the corner. Eight points now for Mike Meadows. Inside look. Good rebound by Wood. Well, you love that look by Iman. It's a high percentage shot, but nothing doing. Mike is going to hesitate. Naduka on the roll, but the foul is going to go against Portland State, and the fouls are starting to mount. Well, they got to keep their composure, number one. Like I said, it's really physical, and they're starting to kind of, you know, we've seen them chip back and forth a little bit, benches and so forth. Got to keep the emotion under control and just play solid. Looks like Harvey got him, and he did. Team's eighth. Harvey's first as Joey St. Pierre checks in, battling asthma, and then medication issues to help treat the asthma. Let's see how many minutes he can give the pilots. Yeah, and they really need a big body like he can bring. He's tough inside, rebounds really hard, and actually can run the floor uh, pretty well for a big guy. Couple of tosses, very important. And look at here, 27-21, the Pilots clawing back. You figure at some point, Portland State will start missing from beyond the arc. Kirby missing there. Look at Wanze, still with the handles. The kick, Applewhite, tough look, can't get it home. Oh, Great ability to continue right back up at the bounce with the tip in. Holy smokes! Portland bench up. They're within four. It's been forever. And they're on a 7-0 run right now, which is huge. Jim's getting into it. Inside look, Curtis blocked. Moses Wood! And credit Curtis, the former pilot, for sticking with it. Oh, what a game! Tremendous effort by both squads right there. High pick. Wanze is going to slow things down. Measure Parker. Good defender here. Switches hands. Good hands by Portland State. Really good hands. But I'll tell you, Wanze's got great handles for a point guard. A few minutes ago, it was 27-16 Portland State. Well. The Pilots are back in it, only down by six. This has been fun. Check the follow. Check the follow. Love it.
the Child Center, you're looking at the University of Portland women's soccer team. Man, they've got a huge match tomorrow. NCAA first round tournament action for the Portland Pilots. What a job by Michelle French bringing the Pilots back to the NCAA tournament. They will face Arizona State home match for the Pilots at Merlo tomorrow. Oh man, that's gonna be something. 7-17 left to go. First half, and it has been a half. That has been a ball. Good hands inside. You gotta love it by Woods. And turnover, Pilots. Yeah, unfortunate. Another turnover. That will give them six for the half. And really an unforced turnover. We talked about that earlier. Portland, before that, four out of five from the field and really kind of had a little bit of momentum going yep. into that timeout. Portland State's bench has been phenomenal. Good block out. Nobody but purple around that missed three. So another opportunity for the Pilots to draw ever closer. And they seem to be getting themselves in a little bit better flow offensively. Obviously making shots helps. What a look inside. Apple White finding St. Pierre. Nice high low right there. Good finish by Joey inside. They're gonna need that, a big guy. How about the seal by Joey, yep. huh? And that high low has been there. They've just got to execute against it. Drive and kick. Portland State has been cold lately from beyond the arc, so they go inside. Yeah, look at Parker saying, ha, ah, I'm all muscle. Well, I'll tell you, they've done a great job of getting to the paint area. Your guards, if they get to the paint, there's going to be damage, and that's what Portland State has done to the pilot so far. Nice answer by Portland State. Gorosito loves the three. Short on that one. Great Watch job that. by St. Pierre to keep the ball alive. Fresh clock. The lefty rimming out is Applewhite. Again, the Pilots with another chance. One's A! Well, Coach Legan says he's probably the best shooter that he has ever coached. And look at his emotion. I love it. One possession deficit now for the Pilots, on a couple of occasions, they've trailed by 11. Boy, I just love Parker owning that baseline on that drive to draw the foul. Well, I tell you, he's answered every time that Portland's made a little run. And you're going to see here that nice little kick to the corner. Gets its feet set and a great shot. Gorosito picks up his second team's fourth. Yeah, he's good. It's just that youngster. All six, one of them, <laughs> and that's code for that's six love. <laughs> Tops uh, is going to be a ball to watch. Catch, shoot, nothing there, Satterfield. And Robertson got lucky on that one. Kind of snuck in there, can't leave a shooter. Look out, look out, near turnover. Ooh, Ooh good job by Wood of staying with that play. Yeah, Wood really on his fan. He kept that thing alive. Meadow tough. Oh! Almost what a, a great tip. St. Pierre coming out of nowhere. Can't get it home. Lefty, Parker, rimming out. Good one and done right there. 450 left to go in this very entertaining first half. Joey Strong draws the foul. He'll go to the line. St. Pierre showing us a big body. Uh, he's come in and given them great minutes so far tonight. Again, nice little kick for the, the three-point shot. Good board and way to just take it right at him, right back at the rim. Iman picks up his second team's ninth. St. Pierre with the seven minutes against Lewis and Clark, only 11 minutes against Florida A&M as he rims out the first one. The transfer out of Milwaukee dealing with those asthma issues, but man, has he been a force off the bench tonight. Yeah, great minutes. And again, you see that the subs coming in and the depth in which Portland has right now. There's so many different combinations that he, that Coach Legs can go to. Misses both. So still 31, 28, 440 left to go in this first half. Loose ball, wide open. Good hustle by Portland State. Great hustle. Those 50-50 balls are huge in a one-possession game like this. 
Wow. How about Parker taking on all kinds of guys wearing purple? Great spin move in the paint and just body control. You can see him just breaking, breaking him down. Nice spin, goes back to the left hand. Good look. Sholin with his first team's fifth. Parker, again, the Portland, Oregon native, transfer out of Montana before that sacred heart. Had a triple-double last year against Yellowstone and 20 assists in a game for Montana. A big sky record, 20 assists. That's amazing. There's a great look at Jace Coburn. The man will not eat breakfast. He wants to eat or uh, coach and work hungry and still drives his 2003 Chevy Tahoe. <laughs> How many miles, we asked him. He said, I don't know, the odometer's busted. I'll bet. <laughs> I just said, make sure your wife has a good vehicle to drive. She does. 32-28. <laughs> what a great hire by Portland State in terms of elevating him to that head job. Well, he paid his dues, that's for sure. Again, the physicality right there with Robertson. Tyler trying to draw the foul. Inside look, and that's a dish by Sholin that makes it easy. Good patience right there, good pivot. Again, finds Chica just on that fake. Two-point game. Chica does a nice job of just laying in the weeds for that pass, and he got it. Baseline drive, good help defense, the oh. kick. Chica playing the help defense, wild shot. Portland State still with it. The drive and kick. Kirby, we, hit, we heard the whistle. They have Nduka for a block. Yep, looks like Naduka picks up his second. Team's sixth two-point game. Again, Portland State has had a pair of 11-point leads. But the Pilots, slow but sure, pushing the rock up the hill. And by golly, they're only down by a deuce. 340 left to go in the first. Come on back. of a first half. Our River City rivalry match living up to expectations as Portland State's lead is now down to just a deuce over Portland as we get late in this first half. Well, they really have cooled off from the three-point line. They started the game five for 10, and since then they are 0 of 6 and haven't scored in the last almost two minutes and 40 seconds. So if you're Portland right now, you gotta be pretty pleased with where you're at. They've gotta do a better job of not allowing paint penetration. The Pilots making this big comeback with T. Rob scoreless at this point. That's not gonna. That's not gonna stick. You know he's gonna start scoring. Uh, good defense. Good hands inside. Pilots with the chance to draw even or take the lead. Parker, known for his defense, in the grill of Sholin. T. Rob. Takes on the defender. Good defense inside by Woods, and here comes Portland State. Yeah, I think Portland State is being really physical with Robertson and, and really kind of taking him away from the basketball. 
Another long ball, nothing there. And the foul on the floor is going to go against the Portland Pilots. It's on Perry. Yep, his second. Team's seventh. So bonus time for Isaiah Johnson and the Portland Pilots. Transfer out of Oregon State will toe the line. Missed a lot of games last year due to a concussion. Well, Portland State got him really late. Yes, you're right. Hasn't had a lot of time with the squad so far. I think he signed in September, yeah, J-Mo. but a nice addition for sure. Two-point lead. Just under three to go in the first half. Again, suffocating Portland State defense. High-low. Good swing. T-Rob inside. Oh. Look! Christian Schulen! What a pass by Robertson. Up fake for the three-point line. They have to respect it. And a great one-handed dish for the dunk. Portland State has not scored for three minutes and 45 seconds. Just one of the last seven from the field. And we're tied up at 32 apiece. We haven't said that in a month of Sundays. Let's see how Portland State reacts. Long ball, Harvey, you bad clutch, clutch bucket by the IUPUI transfer. Big time shot right there. Big time is right. Boy, did Portland State, state in the obvious, need that. Let's see how the pilots respond with two minutes to go in the first half. Uh-oh, Mike is tied up. Almost throws it away. And now just 11 on the shot clock for T-Rob. High pick. Mike's got to put it up. Naduka, and then finally followed by Sholin. Portland hammering the offensive boards. Great, uh -oh. great job of getting to the offensive glass. All right, so again, things getting a little chirpy and chippy, Jennifer Mountain. Well, you expected that. I mean, like we talked about, you got the rivalry in state. You got a lot of guys that know each other from the past and big time game. Great oh, environment here. Love tonight. it. Love it. The lead is one for Portland State, but 30 left to go in the half. Swinging from the outside, the Vikes. Plenty of time on that shot clock. Ooh, Parker had a notion. And now he'll back it up. A little high on ball screen here. Parker hesitates, flips it. Wow, what a stroke by Hunter Woods. Wow. Great patience offensively from the, for the Vikings. Coming off that high on ball and a swing. Three-pointers working again for Portland State. The lead is four under a minute to go. What a first half this has been. Skip pass. Long ball. Not there. Chica keeping it alive. Sholin. Yeah! Talk Thank about you, Chica. Quick trigger, my goodness. Offensive glass right there again. Offensive glass, that's huge. Chica Naduka slipping it out. Showing in double figures. Oh, what good an curl. answer by Harvey. What a curl cut by Harvey right there and a great finish. That was a contested shot. Jamo, I'm breathless. Well, just a great pace back and forth. Guys making plays when they need to. And Legs called a timeout here. Portland State, three of their last three from the field. Definitely a game of runs. Hot shooting by both squads here and there. Nice find by Robertson. Well, just a quick trigger right there. Whiz. But I mean, that's Chica just yeah. doing all little dirty things. I mean, that ball's not tipped. They're going the other way. And instead, again, that doesn't stat show up in a stat sheet, but gives Portland an opportunity for a three-point shot. Duca, the, the sophomore at 6'5". You know, you go on and on about the guy, but to hear Legs talk about how invaluable he is to this club, and he'll tick off five different intangibles. And stuff to your point, J-Mo, that doesn't show up in the stat sheet. And that is... Chica Naduka. It sure is. And if you're Portland here, you know, playing for the last shot, 
no matter what, maybe tying the ball game or at, at the worst going in down three, I think you feel pretty good about this. Skip. Wait a second now. Whistle blows. Wood wants that three ball to count. So the block is going to go against Johnson. Unlucky for the pilots. So the officials will confer and see if that shot from Moses is going to count along with the foul. And they're going to go to the monitor, but I think they called the foul, foul before the pass was made. You may be right, and that's a break for Portland State and unlucky for the Pilots as Wood looked to tie things up with that triple. We'll take a look here in a second on the drive. Great find. Unfortunately, you can't hear when the whistle was called. Robertson calling for the flop right, right there. And I think he's got a case, to be honest with you. I do, too. So now we'll just wait and see what Sean Lehigh, Kelly Self, and Justin Chamian have to say as they look at the monitor and then confer a little bit more. It's a great shot by Wood. T-Rob drawing the defense and then skipping that pass to a wide open Moses Wood. Well, that's one thing that has been open for Portland is the penetration and kick to the weak side for an open three or an open shot. Both clubs have been hot from the floor. Portland State ebbing and flowing with their three-point shooting. Really white hot to start this game and then to end the first half, getting the stroke back. Yeah, both teams shooting 36-37% from the three-point line. 7 of 19 for Portland State and 5 of 14 for Portland. Portland State head coach Jace Coburn out on the floor wanting more explanations. Legs over by his bench waiting for the verdict as well. Great first half though, Jennifer Mount, regardless of uh, what transpires. I mean, there's still eight seconds and a smidge left to go in this first half. If the bucket's waved off, it'll be interesting to see what happens from there. Well, regardless, Robinson's going to be at the free throw That's line. That's right shooting so Portland State's going to get an opportunity here with eight seconds to go in the half. Plenty of time to get a good possession. I would not be surprised if you see Portland pick up a little bit just to slow that tempo because they've done a great job of getting it out made or miss and getting it up the floor. And we're still waiting. The pace of this game has been breathless. From the reaction, it looks like they're going to count it. Well, the scoreboard says they counted it. And he's wow. going to get free throws, I believe. Man. That's a big chain of events right there. That could be a five-point play. Whoa. Whoa. Coburn cannot believe it. So Wood with the seven points and five boards hits the three, and now T-Rob will toe the line. Yeah, and you got one of your best shooters at the free throw line with two shots. Well, this is Portland's first lead since right out of the shoots. And that's his first point of wow. the game. Unbelievable. Hits them both. Plenty of time for Portland State to get something up. Spin. What a finish by Parker. He's in double figures, and the Portland, Oregon native was spectacular in that first half for Portland State. 42 apiece. Wow, what a first half. A couple of 11-point leads for Portland State. The Pilots come back. Thanks to Sholin and that slam. Halftime commences. Whew, we're going to catch our breaths.
I love the fact that higher education can be transformative. It can change someone's trajectory of their life. So it's my hope that the University of Portland, we are the transformative Catholic university in the West Coast. I was born and raised in the great state of New Jersey. I am the youngest person in my family. I have some amazing parents who have sacrificed a lot to provide an education for me and my brother. You know, they, we grew up knowing you're going to get your education, you're going to go to church, and anything is possible as you go forward in your life. My name is Rob Kelly, and I am the president of the University of Portland. We were simply thrilled when Dr. Kelly accepted the opportunity to come to the University of Portland. We spent hours, weeks, months discerning this important decision, and he was exactly what this university needs moving forward. Hey guys, nice to see you. I think you've already seen that on campus already. Dr. Kelly's everywhere. He's ubiquitous. Uh, he's energetic. I think he's a tremendous role model. His experience in higher education at this university and other universities will serve him so very well. There's no one more prepared to lead this university into its next great chapter here on the bluff. One. This is my first day with lots of students on campus in a, in a physical format. The students are back and this is the beginning of it. It's like Christmas morning. Clearly a person that was able to build connections and relationships with people. His prior experiences, it was very intentional that Rob was preparing himself to one day hopefully have the opportunity to lead a Catholic university and I'm grateful that he chose us as much as we chose him. I've been so blessed to know him for over 24 years and one of the very first conversations we had we found out we both loved higher ed and he talked about I want to be a college president one day and it really struck me because my father was a college president and so I saw a lot of similarities of somebody that I you know greatly admire and love more than anything he is like the cheerleader for our family my children, Alex and Addison, first they ground me completely. They give all of this work that I'm doing um, and everything meaning. To be such a collaborator, communicator, and somebody that really deeply believes in justice, it seemed like those were the things that he just naturally is. I have been extremely blessed to have different people in my life. People like Sister Frances, she was my fourth grade school teacher. I remember those little lessons that she taught us, and I bring that with me into the work that I do now. My message to students would be that they're loved want to walk with them and accompany them as they go off and do amazing things in the world. And we're always going to be there. It's about community, and we're going to help them to get connected as we go forward in life. Welcome home and go Pilots. Dr. Kelly, on behalf of the entire Board of Regents, we are thrilled that you are finally here on the bluff. Dr. Kelly and his family, so grateful that you've become a part of the University of Portland. Can't wait to see all of the fantastic things that we can accomplish. Welcome Dr. Kelly to Villa Maria Hall. Welcome Dr. Kelly to the University of Portland. We are so proud of you and we wish you the best of luck at University of Portland. Congrats Dad, I'm becoming president. I'm really proud of you. Every day, remember where your strength lies. God and heaven are below our feet and above our heads, and so always look up and remember that you are loved, and you can do this. Congratulations.
River City rivalry living large here at the Child Center on the University of Portland. 42 apiece. Pilots, Portland State Vikings. What a first half, Jennifer Mountain. It was just electric. Game of the hot hand, back and forth. These guys, I thought the Vikings came out just raring to go offensively, very aggressive. I thought the defensive pressure that they put on Portland really kind of stifled what they were trying to do in the half court. You know, a lot of different things happen. And, and like you said, I mean, it was a game of runs back and forth. Shantae Leggins going with his veteran club much of that first half. Mike Meadows was terrific in spearheading the rally. He really came up big when they needed him. Two big back-to-back -back threes, drives to the rim. He's that floor general that they need, and he's just been really solid. You know, there's multiple people that can score the basketball, but uh, when your point guard can get to the paint and make things happen, and here's a nice drive right here, a nice little finish, hang time. He's got great body control. So Meadows with the 10 points. Sholin had 11 to lead. All pilots, but Meadows doing it inside, doing it out. Yeah, and it was time, the time in which he hit those shots that was huge. Wide open, sticks it. Nice extra pass, just makes him freeze. Defense slides in and strong side shooter, boom. Bench reacts. That bench will not sit down. Yeah, that's for sure. All right, let's look at some numbers, some really good shooting by both clubs. What's What jumps out at you, J-Mo? Well, I, I really think the turnovers for both squads, there were a, a point there in the very first half where both teams were turning the ball over, kind of unforced errors. But you look at uh, the shooting percentage, really tight. Shooting the ball, 7 of 19 for Portland State and 6 of 15. And it was kind of a game of a hot hand, like we said, and then all of a sudden they'd go into the snowbirds and didn't hit a shot. Well, we're going to keep digging in the weeds for numbers that jump off the page as well. Uh, second chance points there for Portland, I think, was a big one. And it was they started crashing the offensive glass. When you're not in a good flow offensively, that's one way to make things happen. Fast, great, fast break points, I think, Portland State, they want to get out and go. That's a good one. And then bench points for Portland State, 17 to 12. Largest lead for Portland State was 11 and a half. But I thought Portland did a great job of getting themselves back in this ball game. All right, quickly, how did they get back? I thought they did a much better job of getting into some offensive flow. They got second chance points by crashing the boards. And then just again, it was that defensive intensity. They picked the level of, ten level of intensity up on the defensive end and didn't give up off offensive boards. All right, let's see how things play out in this pivotal second half. We're at 42 apiece, the Pilots and the Vikings. Second half just around the corner. If it's anything like the first half, oh, we are in for a treat.
moments away from the start of the second half. Portland State and the University of Portland deadlocked at 42 apiece at half. Brenna Green, the newest member of our broadcast team, she's going to tell us about some big news from the WCC today. Brenna? Yeah, that's correct. WCC Commissioner, now former WCC Commissioner Gloria Navarro getting the Mountain West Commissioner job today. Huge news in this conference as Gloria is lauded around the country as one of the premier leaders in all of college sports. It's going to be really interesting to see what this conference does in terms of who they will tab as their next person in charge, but a major loss for the WCC seeing Gloria go and also obviously one of the biggest female leaders in college sports as well. Back to you guys. Awesome, Brenna, thank you for that. And yes, big news, and those shoes, Jennifer Mountain, are going to be, I don't even know if you can fill them. She, Gloria is such an impact person in our conference. Yeah, she did a tremendous job, and we had the, you know, the opportunity to talk to her on Media Day with the West Coast Conference, and, you know, and, you know brought in the Russell Rule uh, for the conference, and just uh, a female leader, you know, you don't find any better. So a big loss for the conference, and like uh, she mentioned, big shoes to fill. Boy, you know, I, it's one of those deals where I know, Jen, you and I will call Gloria, email Gloria with our congratulations and just to, oh, no, you can't go. <laughs> you can't go, Gloria. But she's leaving this conference in such a great place. So her successor, obviously, it's going to be critical. Her successor will come in. And obviously, this is a conference that is on a roll and at a high. Absolutely. And, you know, they'll they'll attract some really good candidates, I'm sure. And I'm sure they're going to go out and find somebody they really feel will, you know, come in and continue the success that the West Coast Conference has had. All right. So second half underway. The Portland Pilots in their home purples with I, the ball. I think these first few minutes are crucial for both squads, just kind of setting the tone on both ends of the floor, getting people involved. If you're Portland, you certainly want to have the momentum that you had in that last 10 minutes and get the flow going offensively. Starks picks up his third quickly. Team's first. Hesitation. Rimming out. That's a good look. You Great got a nice, look. nice penetration by Meadows with the kick and just unfortunate to miss the shot. Bucinich starting this second half only played a couple of minutes the first half for the Pilots. Let's see if he can get his game going. Got that bad rib and there's a lot of contact in this game. Portland State throws it away. Well, good defense of just clogging up the passing lanes right there by Portland. Now they've got a transition it to the other end and get another quality shot. Pilots coming off of that historic run last year, putting a lot of emphasis on non-conference victories as T-Rob is wild. Good job inside by Vucinic on the follow-up. I'll tell you, that might be the most aggressive rebound that I have seen in his career this far. Great job of just crashing the boards and trying to get a second opportunity. Robertson, again, the contact He's going at the officials like he's getting hit every time he goes to the rim. So Harvey with his second, team second. T-Rob, turn around. And Robertson will go to the free throw line. Another foul against Portland State. And Starks now has four. Wow. Well, this is what I love about Robertson right here. Didn't have a great first half offensively, but right from the get-go has made it an effort to get to the rim, make things happen, and get himself going on the on the board. So T-Rob cans the first one, and Starks will sit down. A cluster of fouls in less than a minute puts him into foul trouble and on the bench as Saunders checks back in. Here's a little thought, too, J-Mo, is Vucinic on that offensive rebound took a lot of contact, and that was a good sign with that bad rib. He went right in there and just went toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Yeah, honestly, that was one of the most uh, aggressive rebounds that I've seen him attack the rim with, and great results. Pilots by a deuce early in this second half. 
And you know, the other thing that's, that says right there is his off season has really paid off. He's put on about 30 pounds of muscle and really has changed his game. Step back, three on the shot clock, and Parker hits another outside J. 12 points now for the Portland, Oregon native. Hey, that's a tough step back right over Woods, who's got a long wingspan. That's a great opportunity to score. Parker comes to Portland State from Montana. T-Rob, ooh, sweet. Really hard to guard, just backing people down, a nice little jump hook. Yeah, that's a really hard shot to block. First bucket of the game for T-Rob. Extra pass, another three. Good hustle play by Meadows off the ball. Boy, I really thought Hyman would take that ball to the rim. Instead, it's the kick pass and nothing doing from beyond the arc. So Satterfield, his second. Just so Team's smart. Fourth. Yeah, so smart. Little up fake right here. Got him in the rim because he got to respect that three. And then gets the, the easy bump. Portland State just collecting a ton of fouls to start this second half. Inside look. Good seal. Vucinic. Good catch. Sholin. Step back. Whoa! Whoa! That is a big time shot! thinking movement swing the ball and boom nice little quick crossover in the pole step back awesome 14 points now for Sholin he's got such a high release basket didn't want it unlucky for Saunders here comes Portland nice little euro step right there wood catch shoot you bet place is up for grabs look at the score now jmo well we we knew that this was going to happen at some point just getting a little bit more rhythm but great answer there by portland state <laughs> and you can see how fast again that they want to go at this pace well done portland state not blinking getting the ball down and a high look at the rim High percentage look, I should say. The lead is six for the Pilots. Back and forth we go. T-Rob, inside look, and score for Vucinic. Nice extra pass again, and a great finish by Vucinic. 10-2 Pilot run. Couple of times they trailed by 11 in the first half. Step back. <laughs> and alive, Harvey with the three. I tell you, it's guys making plays right Man. now. Defense is there. Big time shots. Harvey, this is his fourth school finding a home at Portland State. The lead is five for the Pilots. Block is going to go against Portland State. And it's going to go against Saunders. He's got four. Well, this, the foul trouble is going to be, I think, a factor maybe to this last five minutes. My goodness, what a game. The pace is just nuts. Look at the step back by Sholin. This is as good as it gets. And then Moses. Woo.
54-49, hometown pilots defeating, or excuse me, leading Portland State 54-49, as I mentioned. Ton of time left in this second half. The pace has been nutty, loads of fun. Crosstown rivalry. Whoa, are they gonna count that? Yeah, look, look at T-Rob. <laughs> well, just a great, strong gather and finish right here. You see him take the baseline, gets bumped and finishes. Defense was in the restricted circle, so easy block call for the official. Good call, buddy. All right, so Satterfield picks up his third. Remember, Saunders and Starks both have four. The team's sixth, and Robertson, who just moments ago hit his first field goal of the game, getting well at the free throw line, has a three-point play, and the lead now is 57-49. Well, what I love about that guy is he just needs to, he does what his team needs, and right now he, they needed him to score, and he's stepping up. Nine points now for T-Rob. Pilots with momentum. Good ball movement, Johnson cans it. I'll tell you, Portland State's got a lot of guys that can create off the dribble, and then they make that extra pass, and these guys are not afraid to shoot it. Oh, you're reading my mind. They will pull the trigger because they've got a little real estate off those drives and kicks. Portland State continues to answer, 10 on the shot clock. Lofting it up, T-Rob, oh, what a great pass from Meadows to T-Rob. <laughs> Well, when you have a teammate that you know so well, you can kind of see that developing. And again, Robertson going inside, can shoot the three. It's the versatility that he has that just kills people. Four players in double figures now for the Pilots. They'll come at you in waves from all over the court, will the Pilots. Good job of cutting off the driving lane. Eight on the shot clock. Parker leaning. Got to put it up, Harvey. Good defense by the Pilots, and here they come. Great team defense right there. Meadows looking for a lane. Takes the contact and scores! Oh, what a great job. Nice little in and out from the top. Hangs in the air. There's that body control. Just. I love his just his ability to get to the rim, make 12. things happen. Yes, now 12 points for Meadows. The lead is 10 for the Pilots. Let's see if Portland State has an answer. Got to have a hand right there. Parker with eight on the shot clock. Naduka showing. Extra pass, long ball, not there. Satterfield couldn't get it home. Really good extra pass though. And Portland is seven of seven of their last seven shots. It's the kind of shots they're getting too. It's just quality looks. A little rare forced. turnover. Yep, forced right there. Parker inside. Nice. Oh man, Woods blows the layup. Oh, that hurts if you're a Viking fan. And a foul's gonna go against Woods. A little frustration yep. foul right there. His first team's seventh. Yeah, wow. if you're the Vikings, unfortunate. You're gonna be in a bonus the rest of this half. But if and you're Portland, you gotta take advantage of it for sure and do a great job at the free throw line. 13-18 left to go in this game, and the Pilots are in the bonus the rest of the way. Now, the Pilots would like to shoot the ball a little better from the charity stripe. Last year, they were one of the best free throw shooting teams in the country at 79%. This year, right now, 71%. Yeah, uncharacteristic and something I'm sure that they have discussed a little bit. I mean, last year, just tremendous from the line, almost automatic. And there's a miss right there, one of two from the line for Robertson. And let's see if Portland State can get something going. Almost two and a half minutes without a score. Remember, it was tied at halftime. 42 apiece. A little flip from Kirby, and boy, did Portland State need that. Yeah, a little taste of his own medicine right there on Robertson. Just did a nice job, a little jump hook right over him. Tons of time left in this one. We've seen 
Portland State score in bunches and score quickly as Woods can't get the step back going. And here come the Vikings. Nice job by Woods to get Naduka to follow him. His third. Team's first. Quick catch and shoot, no chance there. Kyle is fighting for it. Well, he's had a hot hand. Not a bad look. Against balanced scoring by the Portland Pilots. So many guys in double figures wrap around. Sholin, whoa. Nice penetration, actually went up to dunk that thing and got held. But a nice, nice pump fake and a nice take to the rim. Again, nice wraparound pass by Robinson. Ball fake and gets, gets him tough the rim to the free throw line. Kirby challenges him, picks up the foul. Sholin rimming out. Perry, St. Pierre back into the lineup for the Portland Pilots. Harvey back onto the floor for Portland State. Free throws are going to be so critical for the Pilots, and they cannot afford to go one for two from the line. Exactly. They're going to get a ton of chances at the charity stripe right now, 11 for 15. That's got to get better. The lead is 10, 12.02 left to go in this game. Ton of time left for Portland State. Portland's got a lineup, really, one through four. They can switch pretty much anything. The lefty Woods, as defensively, Portland fell asleep, and Woods was wide open. He's got nine. Certainly can't leave the strong side shooter. I mean, nobody was guarding him on that attempt. So the Pilots looking at a field goal drought over two and a half minutes of no buckets. Perry coming around. Robertson, catch, shoot. Whoa, how about the garbage bucket for St. Pierre? Well, right place, right time. Nice job of just making sure that he caught it in the first place. Kirby stepping back. Uh-huh. I'll tell you, that was pretty nice. That's all individual work by uh, Kirby, that's huh? That's a guy making a play right yep. there. Sure is. Just kind of crossed over Perry, stepped back, nice little looking floater. Comes from Tallahassee Community College, but before that, Southeast Louisiana, so good D1 experience for Kirby. And Portland's gotten away a little bit of ball movement. They're a little going one-on-one, -on -one, just maybe a little too quick. Fouls on St. Pierre, his first. Pilots' second foul. And Portland State definitely in striking distance. 10.41 left to go in this second half. Portland leading it 65-58.
Here at the Child Center, Pilots leading the Vikings 65-58. Portland scoring a ton of points in the paint. Portland State early on with the three-pointers to take those 11-point leads. Momentum shifting after a tie in the first half, or at halftime, J-Mo. But this Viking team will not, will not go away. No, and when you have the ability to shoot the ball the way they have tonight, you're in the ball game. You're right, I think momentum, especially this first 10 minutes, I think Portland's come out and established themselves a little bit more offensively. Um, and they've really taken care of the ball since the seven minute mark or the beginning, the first seven minutes of the game, they only have one turnover. Wild shot, nothing there. Travel's gonna go against T-Rob. Well, he kind of got pushed on the board and just kind of gathered, kind of a late whistle. It's a break for Portland State, that's for sure. You're absolutely right. The, the pace in which they play and with some of the ability that these guys have to score the basketball, this is, this is a game totally in reach. All right, hustle play by the Vikes. They'll inbound it again. St. Pierre tried to knock it off of a Viking inside look, Great and it's a pass. good one, you bet. Quickly, Kirby scoring. Oh, miscommunication and just a bad decision by Perry in the full court press. Wow, Kirby again and again to lead the rally. 12 points now for Isaiah. And now it's Portland State with the chance to tie with the three-pointer or draw within one. What a comeback for the Vikings. They were down by 11 moments ago. Portland State hustling, drawing fouls, making plays. Just defensively out of sorts right now, not really communicating on who they should be guarding. Christian Scholen with a little bit of a push on the defensive board here. Wow, what a turn of events. Sholin's second, team's third. Christian will have a seat. Moses Wood will come in. Again, Portland State with the chance to draw within one or tie things with the triple. Quickly, Portland State getting back in it with the 6-0 run. Yeah, in, in just about a minute. Apple White on the floor for the Pilots. Cutter. Wow. Looks like Applewhite got Harvey on the way to the basket. It's on the floor. Yep. His first, team's fourth. Vikes again inbounding the ball under their basket. And Portland just has not done a good job of communicating on the baseline out of bounds. That first step, oh, St. Pierre rejecting Harvey. Wood. Wood will draw the foul. Oh, Coburn is out on the floor. Oh, they're going to call a charge. So Wood, I thought Coburn at first was saying, hey, what about my guy? But he's actually cheering on his team. Oh, yeah, he is fired up. Great block there by St. Pierre. Off to the races. Moses just, again, a little bit out of control. Nice job of picking up the offensive foul by Portland State. Kirby's been terrific on both ends of the floor, and Jace Coburn was out on the floor cheering on his guy. Kirby, fouls! And Coach Leg is gonna call a timeout. I think this is a really good, maybe not. Kirby with 14 points. The turnover's killing the Pilots, and Kirby making them pay. Iman, take that! Well, you look at what Portland is doing offensively, and it's a lot of one-on-one -on -one stuff, which we talked about in the first half. When they move and they share the basketball, good things happen, and right now has allowed Portland State to get back into this ballgame. 13-3 run by Portland State. Iman tugging on that jersey. He'll pick up his third. Team's ninth, can the Pilots make the free throws? Well, and St. Pierre is a 50% free throw shooter, so not a bad foul, to be honest with you, other than picking up another one. Oh, 
Only his third free throw attempt of the season. That one looks pretty good. Last year at Milwaukee, St. Pierre was a 48% free throw shooter, so not known for charity tosses. Picks up two, they're big. I've impressed with his minutes though tonight. A little bit different than he was the first two games. Just getting a little bit stronger, obviously with some of the health issues. Free throw snap, an eight nothing Portland State run. And coming right back is Hunter Woods. Double, double now for the transfer out of Elon. Again, just nice little step back. Applewhite rejected. And here comes Harvey. Whoa! Moses Wood would have none of it. Wow. What a great attempt at the block. Wow, Moses Wood timing it. Fans thought it was clean. It's pretty close. Wow, Woods or would, excuse me, whistled for that foul. His second, team's sixth. Harvey thought he had a clean slam. Makes the first charity toss. Well, you could see Moses looking to run him down and go for that block. I don't know if his momentum on the, on the block brought him down, and that's what they called, but uh, just a great job of contesting, not just giving up an easy one. Portland just one of their last seven from the field and haven't scored in the last 245. Wow. And look at this score now. 68-67. Portland State. Remember, they trailed by 11. Woo. Very close to another turnover right yep. there. Cold shooting by the Pilots, out of sync offensively. Yeah, they came into this second half with great flow, got people involved, and it just got, has gotten away from them. They were leading 62 to 51, and it looked like momentum was in their favor. Robertson throws it away, all the way to the rack. Ooh. The Pilots dodge a bullet as Parker can't convert, and it looks like Harvey picks up his third. Yes. Well, Robinson on the other end here, trying to kind of force that cross-court pass, gets picked off. Fortunate they didn't give up an easy one in transition, and he's back at the free throw line off the defensive board. Robertson, toeing the line. Been very good from the free throw line. Seven of eight from the charity stripe is T-Rob. Those, those are big. Yeah, big free throws. Just over eight minutes to go in the ball game. Ton of time. Portland State's pace has been relentless. Boy, and Kirby just creates space. He's strong. He elevates and scores. Yeah, I mean, you saw him kind of just dip his shoulder a little bit, and he's got 14 points on the game. Creates that contact. An easy look at the rim for himself. Kirby having himself a game. Lead is back in Portland State's corner. Five Vikings in double figures now as T-Rob gets it home. strong to the basket and a chance for an and one for T-Rob so when we come back T-Rob will toe the line to try and convert the three-point play 71-70 Portland with the lead who 740 left to go
So with 7.41 left to go, Tyler Robertson will try and complete the three-point play. Again, the Pilots led by 11 with about 13.20 left to go in this game. And Portland State's comeback has been epic. Super aggressive, getting themselves to the rim, creating turnovers that, you know, Portland actually did a nice job of handling the basketball for a little while, but just silly turnovers, unforced turnovers led to fast break points and easy looks. Big stick for T-Rob, 72-70. Four in double figures for the Portland Pilots, five in double figures for Portland State. T-Rob now with 16 points, started so slowly. Well, again, there comes that free throw line that's gonna be crucial to make sure that uh, they take care of business at the line. And Duca will be shooting free throws. Double bonus at this point. Iman, Starks, Saunders with four fouls for Portland State. Satterfield with three. Harvey with three. Naduka. Hits the first one. First free throw attempt of the game. And Chica came into tonight one for six from the charity stripe. Gets them both. Two big ones right there. Give the, give the Pilots a four-point lead with seven and a half to go. Ton of time left to go in this game that has seen and shown it all. Big board, Moses Wood. He's going to carry it. And he's got a double-double on the night with that board right there. Wood had so many of those double-doubles last year at four of them. And there's the big triple. So 13 points to go along with those 10 boards. Wow, how big was that? You know, huge. Gives him a seven-point lead when the game was a one-possession game out of that timeout. Oh! How about Johnson flying down the lane? And <laughs> I'll tell you what, Parker was waiting for that baseline runner. I'll tell you, every time that Portland's had a little bit of a stretch where they create a, a gap. The Vikings have come back with huge offensive possessions. Just a smart play by Wood to draw that foul. He will go to the free throw line. So Kirby gets him. Check this out. Great driving dish. Gets the defense to come over and double team. Weak side doesn't drop down and a big time dunk. And again, that's a guy like Cameron Parker. All you're waiting to do is watch his head nod and make a cut, and he's going to find you. So Wood back rimming off on that free throw attempt. His first of the night came in to this contest five for five from the free throw line. When you're right about Portland State, J-Mo, the Vikes, to their credit, all these new faces, all of these new faces will not go away. No, and he talked about all the different combinations. Nice little hesitation. Johnson tried to keep it alive, but tips it out of bounds. Good job on the boards there by Nanduka. Here comes some heat for Portland State, token pressure. They got a lot of guys in a lot of foul trouble Do the Vikings. Robertson posting up Parker, wanted it down low. Meadows loses it, good defense, Portland State, here come the Vikings. And they are off to the race, just trying to create in the fast break in the full court. Mm. Good transition defense, Pilots. Parker knew the second that left his hand that that was good. He's got 15. And Meadows just giving him a little too much room there defensively. He's got to close the gap and make him put it on the ground. Again, Parker from Portland. has got all kinds of friends and family here. Big board, Portland State. 
Woods wants to go to the rack. Tag team defense by the Pilots. Again, really good transition D right there. I think Shola passed up the first shot that he had, but great job of both of them getting back and timing that on the block. That's Portland's fifth block of the game. Another catch, another shoot, three-pointer is off. Naduka will walk it up, trot it up. Now he puts on a little gas. That was a good look out of the out-of-bounds play. And this is, this is going to be crucial. Those fouls early in the half are going to play a big part of this last five minutes. Because Port Portland State's trying to put on the extra pressure, and they're just getting called for the, the ticky-tack stuff. So Satterfield now has four to join Iman and Starks and Saunders all with four. Chica, bonus when he hits these free throws. He's had a pretty good stroke going. He's a gamer. Oh, he sure is. One to two, 79-75. Five minutes left to go in this back and forth affair. I, I like what they did here. They put Moses Wood on him. Wood has to be restrained by yeah. Chica. It's going to be really critical for the pilots to keep their cool. Yeah, you certainly don't want to do something that ends up in a technical foul out of emotion and so forth. But I like what they did. They put Wood on Parker, which just, he's so long. You know, Mike Meadows isn't as big. And just is going to cause, I think, a little bit more of a hesitation for Parker to shoot that three. So Wood picks up his third, team's seventh. Parker will go to the line. He's one for two in the free throw department. The lefty out of Portland, transfer out of Montana. He's getting the business from the crowd. First one's good. He's had a tremendous night so oh, far. Oh, man. 15 points, five assists, a couple of rebounds. Just has been clutch. Oh, just super efficient from the floor. Two-point game. The Vikes hanging around and then some. One-sided affair last year in the pilot favor, not this time around. <laughs> Miscommunication there, turnover pilots and Portland State with the chance to tie or take the lead. Well, 12th Port turnover. Portland needs a defensive stop right here. And then again, just getting back to maybe using a little bit more clock on the offensive end and get some flow, get some movement, make the defense shift. But it's got to start right here at the defensive end. Step back. Short on that shot. Follow. Good. Johnson and one. Great job on the offensive glass and just a turnaround jump hook. Pretty good look right there. Does a great job crashing the glass and nice little putback. Wood picks up his fourth. Team's eighth. Wow. Johnson with a chance to give Portland State the lead again. The Vikings trailed by 11 with 13.20 left to go in this second half. Portland dominating the start of the second period, and the Vikes just would not go away, and they lead. No panic whatsoever at any point in this second half, and it just stayed true to what they do. 240 drought for the Pilots in terms of field goals. Critical possession here for the Pilots. Huge possession, and again, just they need to get some side top side movement and some flow. T-Rob is fouled. Well, and if you're Portland, that's a good guy to have at the free throw line for sure. So Starks will pick up his fifth. He's gone. The transfer out of Georgia will take a seat. And the high-flying Kirby will come in. 
Robertson has already shot 10 free throws. Nine for 10 at the moment. This is the guy you want at the line. Absolutely. And, you know, we talked about the fact that he really does what the squad needs to win. He did not score the ball that well in the first half at all, and this second half has been tremendous, whether it's getting himself to the free throw line or scoring from the field. Big free throws for T-Rob, 19 points now. Remember, he was really quiet that first half and has been himself this second half, that's for sure. So Robertson's free throws giving Portland the one point lead, 4-10 left to go in regulation. Back and forth we go. Ball game between these two rivals. Portland leading Portland State 81 80, 410 left to go. Brenna Green hanging out by that pilot huddle. What do you got, Brenna? Coach Legs talked a lot about how this team needs to rebound well and also have movement on offense in particular. Look for a lot of flare screens this possession. That was an emphasis from him in that huddle. Thank you, Brenna. And let's see if they can follow, the guys can follow what Legs is suggesting, JMO. Well, I've been talking about just getting some movement and making the defensive shift, a lot of dribbling, one-on-one -on -one stuff trying to create. Done a nice job at the free throw line, but really got to get some quality attempts at the field goals. Every attempt so huge now for both clubs. Wow, Johnson, huge, huge shot for the youngster. Well, you saw the defense kind of shifted in, trying to take away the pass on the block and left the weak side three open. Another triple for Portland State. Vikes up by a deuce. 335 left to go in this game. Meadows goes inside. Robertson quickly gets it home. Great job of just getting somebody on your back. He's got 21 points on the night. Season high for T-Rob. Career high is 31, 83 apiece. Love the post up there by T-Rob. Kirby short. Great hustle play oh. inside by Johnson, but it'll be. It's, pi it's pilot it's ball. It's pilot ball, okay. I was screened on that one. We're gonna. Hit a media timeout and quickly go to break. 83 apiece, 312 left to go in this game. T-Rob starting to take things over a bit for the pilots.
left to go in the second half. Portland, Portland State tied at 83 apiece. J-Mo, this has been a classic in terms of this rivalry. Oh, great ball game. Both teams playing and competing really hard. Getting a chance to see a lot of different combinations and personnel and guys making big time plays on both sides of the ball. Pilots will inbound. Naduka. Physical game, really physical oh, game. Oh man. Mike. As Kirby ball hawking Meadows. Naduka. And here's T Rob. Ten on the shot clock. T Rob hesitates. Naduka. staying with it on the offensive glass and that's a huge shot right there two and a half block is going to go against t rob that was close one right there tough call on robinson and we're going to take a look here at this follow from nanduka nice little turnaround jumper misses a first one but just stays with it and a great put back Great play by Naduka. But here's Parker with a chance. Wow. Mm. Rimming out the front end of that one and one break for the Pilots. Again, a physical, physical game. And the charge is going to go against T Rob. Wow. Wow is right. So his second. Wow. That's a tough call right there. Yep. All right, if you're Portland, it's a huge defensive possession right here. You need to stop. We'll, we'll get a chance to take a look at it. He lowered his shoulder a tiny bit, but that's, that's a close one. Well, we're going the other way. Yep. 85-83, 222 left to go in this game. Vikes with the ball trailed by a deuce. Parker with the three, rimming out. Wood hustling. Kirby going after that 50-50 ball as well. We got bodies all over the floor here. Nduka doing a good job of blocking out. Shot goes up and one that he's hit all night long. Great job of blocking out. Those two go down and then a foul called. Kirby's going to pick up that foul. And when the Portland Pilots go through game tape, that's one of those 50-50 plays, especially if Wood can can the free throws. That will be huge in breaking this thing down. Absolutely. You hit these free throws and you get a stop, you're going to be in a great situation to win the ball game. Wood, one for two, going into this mm. shot. Misses. Big miss for the usually reliable Moses Wood from the charity stripe. Yeah, instead of a two-possession game, on the free throw here, it's a one possession game, which could be a big factor in the last two minutes. So let's see if Mo can get the second one down. Oof. He's got 15 points to go along with 11 boards. 86, 83, 210 left to go in regulation. And if you're Portland State, you don't need a three, you need a quality possession. Step back way short on that. And unlucky for the Portland Pilots. I think that ball went off of Meadows. It was an air ball. Wow. That's a break for Portland State. Big, big break right there. Just barely yes, hit the rim. It did. It absolutely did. Satterfield kicks. Here's Parker. What a game he's had. Big rebound. Foul's going to go against Portland State in a hustle rebound by Sholin. Now Meadows is in the face of Sholin saying, you got to settle down. Don't take the bait. Yeah, there's been a few, few times back and forth with whether it's the bench or I don't know if it's the coaching staff or what, but uh, both teams real chippy at each other and emotions are real high. So Sholin three for four in the free throw department. 
Meadows literally had to get in the face of Sholin, telling him, don't go there, don't go there. And missing the first one is Sholin. The pilots letting Portland State hang around with the missed free throws. Yeah, free throws in the end make a big difference. Got to do a better job of taking care of business at the line. You really need this one if you're the pilots. Yeah, and it makes it a two possession yep. game. Ton of time left. Buck 47, 87 83, Portland. Vikes in a little bit of a drought all the way to the cup. Oh, I wonder what Kirby was thinking. They're going to they're gonna take a look at this. Yeah, they are. The pilots think it's their ball on a Portland State turnover. And we'll see after the refs, who've been very busy, will review it. And Portland on a 6-0 run right now. And I think the officials have done a pretty good job with a very, very physical too. game. And, and teams that are playing real emotional. We'll, we'll get a chance to take a look at penetration here. Goes up, gets caught in the air. Oh, oh yeah, there's Nobody no touched. question. That's an easy one. Yep, there's just no question. And while we have a moment, J-Mo, Veterans Day today, of course, and we give our deep and humble thanks to all those who have served our country. And this is a day that we honor you. Absolutely. Thank you to all the men and women that have served or are serving. We owe a huge debt. 87, 83, pilots leading. And this next conference and end result of what the officials look at in terms of, all right, so they make the right call. With all due respect, that ball belongs to the pilots. Absolutely, that's an easy one. Now, really important that you use a little bit of clock on this. You do not need to go fast, and you certainly got to do a better job of taking care of the ball versus this full court press. This, this officiating crew has been top shelf tonight. Mid-season form, these guys. Yep. Here comes the Heat, Portland State. Naduka looking for help. And Shante was at the other end with one of the officials just in case. Yep. Very smart. Timeout. Portland, a 30 second timeout. It'll be a 30-second timeout. And Duca had somebody from the back line coming in, just a little bit hesitant to throw that pass across the key. So smart in calling that timeout, not affording a turnover at this point. So the pilots have been shooting free throws. It feels like most of this second half as Portland State has just wrapped up the team fouls. Well, they're 24 of 32 from the free throw line. That's a lot of free throws. The most makes of the season so far, 24. Free throw attempts, season high today as well. So Naduka again inbounding the ball underneath Portland State's basket. Minute 37 left to go. Safely in the hands of T-Rob. Yep. Really smart. Saunders with that foul. That's number five. He'll take a seat. Well, the, the thing about that right there is Robertson knows how to draw the foul. And just smart getting himself right back to the free throw line. And these two right here are huge. Big time. Satterfield back onto the floor for Portland State. Robertson 11 for 12 going into these attempts. And it changes the complexion of the game if he can get both of them down. I couldn't agree more. Robertson, no field goals in the first half. Very quiet. Has gotten well in the second half, not only from the charity stripe, but hitting big buckets as well. T-Rob racking up the points. He's got 21. Ooh. 23 now for T-Rob. Yeah, 
Moses Wood on the on the shooter. That was a good job. Great D by Wood. He's called for that foul before the block, and he has fouled out. Playing pretty good defense on Cameron Parker, but this is a slippery guy. Hmm. He just kind of got him with the hip a little bit right there. Not a bad call. Hands are up, but, you know, just slid a little bit underneath him, and you're right, he's crafty. How good has the Portland Oregonian native Cameron Parker been for Portland State? Tremendous night. 19 points, 7 of 12 from the field, 2 of 5 from the three-point line. Parker's career high is 23. Five assists to go along with that. Career high in assists, 24. <laughs> Wow. Lord have mercy. So here's Parker. Three for five from the line. These are mighty big. First one is true. First points for Portland State in over two and a half minutes. Again, here comes the heat. Two big sticks by Parker. Running that baseline. And that's the last timeout for the Portland Pilots. Great D by Portland State to force that timeout. Really good job of forcing that timeout. And they've got two timeouts on the other side with 118 to go. Big time stop right here, and they have a chance. Again, this is a Portland State team making its season debut with all of these new faces, and you'd never know it. Oh, no. They, they've played really hard, very competitive, a lot of different lineups, but some guys that have made huge plays, very athletic, very aggressive. I've been very impressed with this squad. This is a team that's going to, you know, he talked about playing for March. They're going to be pretty good when March comes along. Five players in double figures for Portland State, led by Parker's 21. Four and double figures for the Portland Pilots, led by T. Robs, 23. 13 of 14 from the free throw line, Tyler Robertson. And pretty much all in the second half. Oh my gosh, I mean, when you think about T. Robs' line at halftime, he had two points. Yep. Both of those points coming from the charity stripe. Exactly. No buckets. Yeah, did not have a field goal in the first half. Two points at half, and now he's living large. Well, again, that's just his recognition of knowing what the squad needs and gets it done. The hard thing about that timeout is he's now stuck. He can't run the baseline. No timeouts. <laughs> Got to get it in. Careful here, Jack thought maybe he was fouled, ball tipped. T-Rob going hard, T-Rob! He'll go to the line again. Ooh, I didn't think they were gonna call that, kind of a late whistle. Really smart take though, had the lane. Harvey with his fourth. Robertson will go to the line again. 13 of 14 from the free throw line is the veteran Tyler Robertson. Preseason all WCC. What he did last year was just magical. Tremendous year. So again, you can't emphasize enough. Robertson with two points at halftime. And now he is absolutely leading the charge and just keeps getting better and better at the free throw line as the game goes on. Well, whether it was at the free throw line, creating plays by backing people down and finding open people at the perimeter and just posting people up here and there. Two more for T-Rob. Unbelievable game for Robertson. Parker drives, kicks. Look at that hustle rebound by Meadows. 
Under a minute to go. Great rebound right there by your point guard. Wow, Meadows coming and the real estate he covered to get that loose ball and more free throws for Robertson. Woods picks up his third and Robertson. You know, the one thing that I really see within this group is the chemistry and we talked about okay building a culture and all that and that's what legs is trying to do with this group but you know you got your your three guys that came with you from eastern out on the floor right now just super solid getting the team bought in staying under control not getting too emotional and too chippy that cost you and then making big plays meadows with a big board and then t rob again with a great uh, great second half Again and again and again, T-Rob from the free throw line. T-Rob with the charity toss. I mean, we just don't quit calling his name. <laughs> it's just so thing clever. you don't want to do is foul. Nope. So Parker keeps Portland State in it with the driving layup. Turnover. Quick turnover. Quick three. Ooh, back rim and off is Harvey. 33 seconds left to go in the game. Parker leaning in. The flip. Naduka loses it. Harvey can't get it home. And Same the Portland team. Pilots <laughs> fight over it. Sholin and Naduka with 19.8 left. Portland State will get another crack at it. And they're going to call a quick timeout here to set something up. The biggest thing here is you can't foul a three-point shooter, and if they do score, you've got to get the ball in quickly and not turn it over. Portland State doing a great job of trying to create and get that shot attempt and crashing the boards. Second opportunities right there at the very end. But again, if you're Portland, you do not want to foul a three-point shooter. Just contest. Got to rebound the basketball. And if they do score one way or another, do not. You got to get the ball in. You got to get it in and not foul. Robertson setting a career high in free throws attempts. Free throw attempts. He's 17 for 18. And you, you think about this game that still has legs. I mean, 19.8, that's a long, long stretch. Portland State just keeps jacking it up and finally gets one home. Again, no timeouts for the Pilots. Robertson will go to the line again. Well, Portland State has one timeout left in the ball game. Kirby with his fourth. Robertson to the line again. Up next for the University of Portland, tough road trip, Kent State and Air Force. Going to test the waters on the road, and we talked about this with Coach Legs, is preparing themselves for the WCC by playing really top opponents. And even talking with some of the players, they're really excited about this preseason schedule. Legs said he wasn't about to sugarcoat this game. He said, we want this game badly. We don't like those guys. They don't like us. We've been playing them since our Eastern Washington days. We want this one. My gosh, what a game for that fella, Cameron Parker. He has been able to shoot the three. He has broke down the defense, got to the rim, got to the paint pretty much at will. Parker with a new career high, 25 points. This really crafty, skilled, athletic. Robertson shattering his own personal best in terms of free throw attempts and made. He is 19 for 20. That, that number is hard to wrap your head around. That's, that's just free throw shooting, and he's only missed the one. 
Well, he's done a nice job of getting himself to the free throw line, and I think we were in the bonus with, what, 15 minutes to go in the half? Something like that, yeah. 13 minutes, something like that. Portland stayed a little too aggressive right from the get-go in the, the beginning of this half and has allowed Portland to go to the free throw line, a majority of it being Robertson. So it's a four-point lead for the Pilots. And while I'm thinking of it, Portland State up next will be at Seattle, and then their home opener will be Evergreen State before playing at Oregon State. But 10.3, J-Mo, you know as a coach at the highest level, that's a ton of time. It is, and if you get a quick turnover right here and a score, you're right there. And Portland has struggled a little bit to get the ball inbounds. I think it's smart. They've spread the floor a little bit here. It's hard to stop somebody coming full speed ahead, you know? Oh, my goodness. T-Rob getting absolutely clotheslined by Harvey. The official completely misses that play. Unbelievable. I didn't see it myself. Oh, I was my gosh. Here. Well, trust me, I saw it, and it was a clothesline neck job by Harvey on T-Rob. Well, they're going to take a quick look at it. It was right in front of our table. Check this out. Watch this. And no call. Yeah, that was a good one. Come on. Harvey absolutely closed lines. I'm not saying it was... I don't intentional think it, yeah. with malice, but I mean, you wrap your arm around your opponent's neck and he goes to the ground, you usually get a foul called. And Robertson, not one to try and act his way into more free throws, went down hard. Well, you know, the new rule this year as well is flopping. You know, you, you fake a, a play like that, you can call for a technical foul, which would change the scope of this game really fast if Portland State got the ball back, which I, I don't think that's going to happen, but that's what Coach Coburn was talking about. Again, another review with 10.3 left. It's a four-point pilot lead. This crew has been really, really good, this officiating crew, but that was a tough one not to call, and perhaps no one saw it. Yeah. But they're looking at it now. So everyone in the house, and it's a good crowd yeah. here at the Child Center, everybody waiting to see if this review results in anything. A pro pilot crowd, obviously, and we'll see what happens. Well, I tell you, the, the culture has changed so fast with Coach Legs coming in here. I mean, it, you know, first big time game of the season, and this place is, is pretty packed and just a great environment. Great environment. Students are here. Yep. A lot of alums, a lot of fans, period. And of course, Portland State bringing a good crowd as well. Rivalry game, so critical for both teams, especially early in the season when you're looking to set a tone and to get a little bragging right thing going too. For sure. And I, I think, you know, if you're the Vikings, you got to be pretty pleased with your home with this opener. Just oh man, the different combinations and uh, the depth that he said that he had coming into tonight. Again, the season opener for Portland State. They lose their top eight scores, top three assist guys. 
their top three-point shooters. Yep. So many guys moved on, whether they transferred out or graduated, and Jace Coburn brings in all these new faces, and they look good. Well, they've got them gelling pretty good so far. And again, you know, he's talking about playing for March. And they upgraded it to a flagrant foul. Wow. That's the right call. That's huge. I mean, you can't dispute what you saw in the review. And yeah. Harvey just absolutely, I'm not saying it was malicious at all. No, no ill intent, but still the contact up around the neck. And those are huge free throws plus possession. And they get the ball on the sideline. 31 points, tying a career high for Robertson. He set that with a couple of 31 point efforts last year, including that triple double. 21 of 22 from the charity stripe. T-Rob goes high for that one. And he'll go back to the free throw line. This game, if you're a Pilot fan, thankfully close to being over. Yes. And I'll tell you, the, the thing about Robinson is he finds a way to score and get it done. Two points at halftime for Tyler Robertson. Right now, he's sitting on 31, tying a career high. What a game this has been. Yeah, a lot of fun. Great atmosphere. And again, just two teams really competing hard. They're gonna, both teams are going to learn a lot from this. So Robertson, who is 21 of 22, career bests in both departments, makes and tosses, does it again. New career high, 32 points. And perhaps it'll be 33. My goodness. Yeah, I don't know if I would have seen this stat sheet at the end of the first half. That's two for points. sure. Two points. And he misses a free throw. Stop the presses. So that'll do it. The Pilots outlasting a very gritty game athletic. Portland State Club 98-91. Tremendous effort by both squads. And, you know, you just got to put your hat. I thought the Vikings competed really well. They're going to have a great team and a, and a nice run towards March like he talked about. But good job of the Pilots staying with it. I thought Tyler Robinson was absolutely phenomenal taking over the ball game in the second half. Two points at halftime for Tyler Robertson. He finishes with a career high 32 points, 22 of 24 from the charity stripe. And the two teams are still chirping at each other. There is a lot of emotion. Let's just put yeah. it that way between these two clubs. Well, and the one thing that I'm going to give the Pilots credit for is they didn't let the emotion get the best of them and do something silly. Did a smart job of just keeping their composure and making sure that they came away with the win with nobody out for the next game. How big of a victory is this for the Portland Pilots in this young season? Well, I think it's huge because I don't think they played that well tonight, especially the beginning of the ball game. But they found a way to win, and that's what good teams do. I think that's a very good uh, basketball team they played against tonight. And I think they're going to do some good things in the big sky. But I thought that not for having your best effort, you come away with a big win. What do you suppose the difference was when Portland State started so hot, Portland draws even at half, 42-42, and then the second half just kind of had the ebbs and flows of momentum swings. I thought the, the way that Portland came out in the second half and just kind of setting the tone made a big difference. Again, the Vikings didn't back down, but it came down to defense, boards, and then Tyler Robinson taking over the ball, basketball game at the offensive end. Career high 32 for T-Rob. How clutch is this guy? Oh, man, I'll tell you. You, you want him on your team, no matter what. Like, he just understands what he needs to do to make things happen and for his ball club to win. Speaking of T-Rob, standing by with Brenna Green. Take it away, Brenna. Good evening out there. This was a feisty, fiery, physical game. What does it mean to you that your team was able to come out on top in this one? You know, we knew that 
to come out. It's their first game of the season, our third. Our legs are a little tired. They're more fresh. Uh, we started off pretty slow, but I was just proud of our team for bouncing back. I took a lot of responsibility of how I played in the first half, so I knew I had to step up in the second half, along with the rest of the guys in our team, and I'm just happy we came out with the win. Do you know your stat line from the free throw line tonight? I do, but I know I made a lot. 22 of 24, uh, 32 points, I believe. Off the top of my head, you had two points in the first half. And I could tell you were a little frustrated in the, at the beginning of the second half. Just what kept you in it? And also, I mean, how did you have that concentration at the free throw line? That's crazy. You know, my dad's been on me a lot uh, since I was young about free throws. So. Credit to my dad back home. Um, I'm just proud of our guys. I mean, I know I had a big second half, but without my guys getting me the ball, I couldn't get that big second half. So I'm just glad we're 3-0 right now. I've got a big road trip coming up, and so hopefully we can go 2-0 and on, those, on that road trip. Being able to win a close game like this so early in the season, what does this do for the confidence of this team? Absolutely. I mean, we had a great home crowd, too. A lot of confidence for our guys. Crowd was involved, everyone was loud. It just makes it a bit more fun to play in front of. So hopefully each and every home game, we can back up that crowd and get more and more to each and every game because it's just a fun environment to be here at the University of Poland turning this program around. Thank you so much, Tyler. Thank back you. to you guys. Awesome job. Thank you, Brenna. T-Rob, you beast. 32 points, a career high for that veteran from down under. All right, put this one in the books. Portland outlasting Portland State, a classic in this rivalry. The final 98 to 91. Pilots go to 3 0 in this young season. Coach Legs has put a premium on non conference victories, got one tonight. For Jennifer Mountain, Brenna Green, our entire broadcast crew, I'm Ant Shots, saying so long from the Child Center. Great to have you with us tonight. It's going to be a fun season of pilot hoops. Can't you just feel it? Stay safe, stay healthy. Enjoy your weekend, everybody.